All right, how's it going, everyone? My name is Theron, and welcome back to another Fire Emblem Heroes summoning session. Today we have the new Summer Vacation banner, which, as expected, yet another Summer Three Houses banner. However, this time, they mixed it up by adding some Radiant Dawn characters. And I'm not gonna lie, I actually like it like that. Yes, I know it's, again, more Summer Three Houses, but I kind of like it when with the Summer Banners, they introduce two different games, or multiple different games, I guess, together for the banner. Mainly because it, you know, provides a bit more variety. Also, I think it makes the, uh, Paralogs really interesting. I haven't played this Paralog yet, but I'm excited to find out. also, yeah, it was blatantly obvious that this was more Summer Three Houses because of Claude in the silhouettes. They thought they could trick us, but we all noticed that side braid. We all know our Golden Deer Boy when we see him. <laughs> I guess we can, uh, I guess we can start with Claude for the uh, little unit review I do. He's got the Frozen Delight and uh, I'm very surprised by A, the fact that everybody on this banner essentially has a Brave Effect weapon, but also B, that Claude is the 4-star demote, but he comes with his PRF skill Fallen Star. That doesn't sound too bad, but his weapon has Kanto in it, it is far trace, so no uh, remainder movement, a slain effect. Plus six to his attack and speed during combat if he's within two spaces of allies. And of course, he's given the brave effect if his bonuses plus the penalties on foe added together is greater than or equal to 12. And remember, he has Fallen Star, which debuffs the enemy, and he comes with the rain. He's always going to have greater than or equal to 12. Or the... He's always going to have the Brave effect, is what I'm trying to say. It's insane that that happened. And again, he's the four-star demote. This is just ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I guess we've gotten to the top priority because... Hey, we started with Claude, why not? We have our harmonica duo this time, Edelgard and Altina. Interesting choice, I will definitely say that. But then again, they paired uh, the two girls together in swimsuits because they know it's going to sell. And they're not wrong. <laughs> anyway, she's got the Regal Sunshade, slain effect just like always. A plus six to her attack and a minus six inflicted on foe during combat. 40% damage reduction on foe's first attack. And then a very odd... Uh, Brave effect where uh, if the, there are foes within three columns or three rows, depending on. God, I actually don't know how to word this sometimes. But I think the best way I can say it is depending on how many foes are within three columns or three rows centered on her, she will get her brave effect. But ultimately, to ultimately depends, again, on how many foes are within those three columns or rows. So if there is less than or equal to two, she just needs one foe within range. Oh, I'm sorry, that was... Sorry, I misread that. It depends... You, know, you can tell how confusing this weapon makes me sound, because... It is very confusing. That's all I'm gonna say about it. I'm gonna get a drink of water first before I continue. Uh. Okay. I'm gonna try explaining the brave effect of Edelgard's weapon one more time. Depending on how many foes are on that team, will determine how many foes need to be within range of Edelgard for her Brave Effect to happen. That's what it was. Oh my god. 
So again, if there's less than or equal to two foes on the team, she just needs one foe within range. Three to five, which is the normal for a lot of teams, she just needs two of them within range. And if it's six or more, which would be an eighth rates team, then she needs three foes within range so she can trigger the brave effect. Playing one part of a weapon. But that should tell you guys just how confusing they are making these weapon descriptions. I am. I'm gonna say this right now. I am very thankful that Phoenix Master 1 literally made an image on what each of these characters' pair off weapons do. I know he probably doesn't watch my videos, but. Phoenix Master 1, thank you so much for doing the Lord's work and making this very easy to understand. Yeah, we couldn't do this out, man. Anyway, back to Ilgard as we get pity broken by a gate tree. You hate to see it. It, dude, there are no cute girls that have shown up yet. You are literally the first one here. Go away. Anyway, uh, Edelgard also comes with a new C skill, Assault Troop, and it is inheritable because it has the 3 next to it. Essentially, at the start of turn, if unit's HP is 100%, or any foe is within 3 columns or rows centered on units, grants the charge effect to unit for one turn. And charge is interesting in terms of what movement it gives, because it grants the unit the ability to move up to three spaces in any cardinal direction, no going diagonal, of course, thankfully. But the movement is counted as warping. So, foes like Legendary Murr and Gatekeeper with his B skill can actually negate this. Interesting. And I... I kind of like that. It feels like an upgraded version of Armored March. Or Armor Stride, I guess. Because it doesn't require you to be near or away from your allies. It just requires you to be healthy or if there are foes within three columns or rows of you. Very interesting. And then, of course, their Harmonized skill, plus six attack, grants resonant shields, and bonus doubler to unit and allies from their respective games. Honestly, that's a pretty mild... A harmonized effect. Also, hello, Claude. Thank you for finally making this summer vacation worth it. Let's go. Oh my god, he's plus speed. I will take it. Look at my boy. <laughs> yes, I'm a golden deer. Fear the deer. <laughs> hmm. Like I was saying, this harmonized skill is a pretty tame one. Especially considering how last time we had Roy and Elwood grant dominance to, or not dominance, treachery. Which means that every set is just completely doubled, and they double all their damage, I think is what it was. I don't know. It, it was just pure insanity last month. My god. With those two out of the way, let's move on to our other two units, Dimitri and Micaiah. First up, we have Dimitri wielding the Unyielding Ore, which just looks like a much dumber version of Aaron Barr, but whatever. You do, you guy. Built in Kanto, slain effect. Kind of seeing a pattern here. Then plus five to all stats during combat if his HP is greater than or equal to 25%. Seen that a lot. And then, of course, grants the Brave effect if there's a bonus on foe, or if he has more speed than the foe. That's an interesting effect, because... I'm pretty sure he's gonna always have that Brave effect, since nowadays everybody's trying to get as many bonuses as they can. 
Oh, they're even trying to stack as many bonuses as they can turn one, just to become unbeatable. So yeah, he, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to always have that uh, great effect active. Of course, he also has the new uh, speed defense. Yeah, speed defense menace. That's what it was. I, I almost had a brain fart there. Which, I mean, I'm not surprised they're introducing that literally the banner after E got introduced. So if you remember, E comes with uh, Threatened Speed Defense 2. I think it's 2. Yeah, 2. Which is the prerequisite for getting Speed Defense Menace. So, huzzah! Now we have somebody to fodder off Threatened Speed Defense. So somebody could get, say... Dimitri's A skill, attack speed catch, and speed defense menace if they wanted. It's just a suggestion. I'm not saying you should, especially since it's Dimitri. I'm just saying you could. <laughs> and of course, last but certainly not least, we have Micaiah giving the moonlit, moonlit drop. My bad against armor and cavalry foes, slain effect, plus six to her attack and res during combat. And then if her res is greater than the foes, one of two things will happen depending on the range. If her res is between five and fourteen greater than the foe, I I'm like my bad. Anyway, if Mikai's res is between five and fourteen greater than the foes, she gets a guaranteed follow-up. But if she has 15 or more res than her foe, she gets the Brave Effect in player phase, not enemy phase. And I... I think that makes it a little fair and balanced. Uh, I will say, though... This is probably just me, but I'm sure there are other people. I kinda wish... Mikaya would have other weapon effects than her standard effective against armor and cavalry foes. Because literally every alt of her has that. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but like, she could really use some variety. Also, what certainly doesn't help her is being a cavalry foe, and all of her other alts are effective against her now. Ah, wonderful. Or star special Sue. I'm honestly not phased by the lack of five stars I'm getting because this is normal for my uh, summer banner summon sessions. For some reason, the summer banners just hate me. I don't know why. Granted, I think like last year I had some decent luck. But like, yeah, every other year, the summer banners just hate me. This is normal. thing I will say that is very interesting, at least what's going on in uh, Bay recently, which actually has to do with this banner, is the way they're distributing duos and harmonics now. Because if you remember, last month, the Bride banner, we had Harmonic, Elwood, and Roy. And now they've given us yet another harmonic with Edelgard Altina. Very interesting since this isn't the first time they've broken the pattern of dual harmonic, dual harmonic. Ninja Corin did that, uh, yeah, last year. So it's, it's very interesting that they're now starting to break up their patterns that they normally do. 
Also remember, the legendary banners and mythic banners are no longer going every other. We're now getting two legendaries mythic, two legendaries mythic. Which, I mean, it's not a bad thing, but like... It's still just very interesting that they're taking a break from their usual routine. Granted, I'm sure they have something planned up their sleeves. Who knows? Last five, and somebody we show up. <gasps> On the last circle, let's go. <laughs> I will take it. And fully neutral. That is A-OK -okay by me. You guys are armor, right? Yes, you are. It's so hard to keep track of movement types these days. All right. Uh, oop. if this is, ugh, sorry, if this isn't, ugh, I can't talk. If this doesn't turn out to be Dimitri, I'll probably spark for him. Yep, yeah, sparking for Dimitri. Let's go. <laughs> also, let's go. Final circle, and I got the harmonized unit. That was a clutch pull right there. <laughs> Alright, Micaiah, two more chances. Ah, three star, bang. chance for a Micaiah. It probably won't happen, but like, it'd be awesome if it did. <laughs> I say that as a three-star shows up. Let's go. Like I said, that's my normal luck. I'm used to it. Anyway, let's get the summertime boar. Thank you. water effect in this cape right here. That looks so... so accurate to what you'd see at, at an ocean. I love it. Oh, that is going to do it for today's summoning session. I hope you all enjoyed. Got some pretty decent loot. At the very least, I was able to get the uh, three houses lords, so that's a plus. But thank you all so much for watching. If you did summon it on this banner, let me know who you got down below in the comment section. I always love seeing the results. And if you haven't summoned yet, I wish you all the luck in the world. But with that, I'm Theron, saying I'll see you next time. So it's a, with a very scuffed outro, farewell and game on. <laughs>